Hey there, I'm Jesse, and you're listening to the Deep Lore Boys podcast, where me, Matthew, and Jackson delve into the random, rare, and often ridiculous pieces of human history. People see the goat, and they just go, like, sicko mode. Something switches <laughs> off. They have, like, a Winter Soldier right. episode. Alexander the Great had already named, like, dozens of cities. He decided to name this city after his horse. To put it simply, in layman's terms, he's bussin'. So, I don't remember where I learned of this thing, but I learned of this tradition in Sweden called the Gavel Goat. And basically, uh, back in 1966 is where the, the lore starts here. I guess for Christmas or something, they constructed this massive goat out of, like, I don't even know what they made it out of, like, wood and straw or something. It's become part of the tradition that, like, somebody out there always burns it down or, like, rams a car into it or demolishes it in some <laughs> spectacular fashion. So it's not supposed to be destroyed. It's not, like, a giant pinata. No, no, it's not a giant pinata. It's, it's put up and, like, guarded. But people always manage to destroy it somehow. There's always, like, one lunatic out there, at least, who, like, torches it. Yeah, so starting back in the 1960s, when this thing was put up, uh, <laughs> on the 1st of December, the 13 meters tall, 7 meters long goat was put into place for the first time. And on New Year's Eve at midnight, the goat went up in flames. The perpetrator was found and charged for serious vandalization. They don't even give a name, but this nameless hero who first torched the gavel goat started... A tradition. Dude, they have the whole, like, diagram of each year and what happened, so. I mean, if you look at the thing, it looks like, I mean, I'm obviously, I don't approve of arson, I'm a firefighter, but, like, seriously, it looks very right. to burn. It's, it's very flammable. So keep in mind, this, the original goat went up in 66, this is 87, so this is about 20 years of the goat being burned down. It says the goat was heavily impregnated with fire retardants, so... I'm guessing that when it says heavily impregnated with fire retardants, it wasn't just like, oh yeah, we'll just sprinkle a little water on there. They went full. Yeah, they ain't full... gonna get to it. No, I'm thinking they were like, enough is enough. Right. This goat <laughs> they, is They not were thinking burning. this is gonna be the year. But nevertheless, someone burned him down the week before Christmas. I think the only thing that rivals their dedication to keep the goat standing is the dedication to destroy it. Like, imagine. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> imagine. imagine seeing, like, the goat, it's kind of cute. <laughs> Like, it's just a nice goat, and people just see it, and they decide, like, that's gotta go. <laughs> that's, no, I, that's gotta not go. in my town. It, yeah, it looks like they put up a, like, security camera to monitor the goat, and then somebody in 2004 hacked the website with the goat <laughs> cam and changed what? the webcams. Uh, they, put, they put security guards out around the goat to prevent vandalism and then the guards got cold because the temperature was below zero and they went oh, to no. a nearby restaurant oh no that was the first while mistake. they were in there for just a few minutes in the <laughs> restaurant watching the goat from the restaurant people come up from the other side of the goat <laughs> they, they, were, they were waiting they were they were literally <laughs> sitting there <laughs> waiting goat, for the proper moment this goat why Ugh. aren't swedish people supposed to be like really nice isn't that the stereotype they have a hatred for goats this is it's like a social experiment to see like here's a giant flammable goat how long can it stay it says the goat was burned only a few hours after his grand 50th birthday party because in 2016 yeah it would have been 50 his unofficial huh. little brother built by the students of vet Vasa Skolan got to fill the void at the Castle Square. However, this goat that they built was hit by a car <laughs> on, the, on the 5th of December. <laughs> so these kids built this gavel goat for the 50th birthday party. <laughs> and somebody came by. <laughs> and just, the article just, doesn't give any, any information on the car accident, it simply finishes off and just says, this goat was later hit by a car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what does that mean? Dude. Like, was it intentional? Just mass destruction was in this just town. just like, whoops. <laughs> Why? Why? So, my other question, the other thing that I'm wondering is, perhaps it's actually just, like, so... 
because it's Ugh. been the site of a few different car accidents, <laughs> which I think in some ways that could be an accident because it appears to be in like the middle of like a village square. It's not in the middle of the road. <laughs> There's a fence around <laughs> it's, it. It's think, you have to I see it and you... drive into it. <laughs> People see the goat and they just go like sicko mode. They just like something switches off. They have like a Winter Soldier right. episode. And they right. Just they go, drive. Right. Because imagine, like, so, you have to make a conscious choice to swerve off the road and attack the gravel goat. Can you imagine you're driving, you're just getting hypnotized. You're like, goat. And... Right. Wait a second. Hold up. In 2001, the gavel goat was burned down by somebody from Cleveland. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there's not even people Some guy from Cleveland just... <laughs> he, okay, he literally burned it with his cigarette lighter. And so it's not even possible that this is like they're trying to like make their town famous and get on the map or whatever because these people are spending like actual time in prison for this. Yeah, they're just arsonists. I love how the security gets increasingly more intense until at this point. <laughs> 2020 guards double fence 24 hour CCTV public webcam feed. <laughs> 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 but now, fence, now they're just 20... inviting like greater competition. Like somebody's gonna roll up with a tank and shoot it, or somebody's gonna like kamikaze <laughs> they the have goat. A canine unit. What? <laughs> Protecting the goat. For the goat. <laughs> Is it possible they could put this thing up on like some sort of pedestal so it's slightly harder to reach? Do you think that will stop them? Okay, just picture just picture this, okay? You will then have a Swedish Viking show up with a flaming arrow and just pull back a bow <laughs> and shoot it into the Blast goat. them. That would be really metal. I mean, basically, either that or like a molotov would. would be the two options. People have been getting creative with the ways they've attacked the gavel goat for a while. Somebody was plotting to kidnap the goat with a helicopter and bring him to Stockholm, is what I'm getting. <laughs> it, it was unharmed, but, like, somebody was straight gonna abduct this thing. So, just beefing up the security just invites more, like, chaos, I feel like. So, it was burned down 2016. And then right. it says, after a few flame-free years under 24-hour security, the goat was again burned on December 17th, 2021. And oh, at this point, yikes. I don't think that there is a goat standing. It's No, not right now, because it, like... it will be going up uh, in December of 2022, but... Oh, you're right, yeah, it'll go up. The Why first time we... the goat survived more than two years in a row was in 2019. Can we just stop and look at, like, think about that? That is kind of wild. Yeah, that was the longest it had gone. Do we think that it will survive the 2022 Christmas season? Yeah, we need some predictions. You're right. I think it will. I think it will. You think so? It's made it for, yeah, 2017, 18, 19, 2021. 20, no, no, it was burned down 2021. So the the four-year streak ended. Apparently the most recent arsonist last year was drunk so it's not even like the same people by chance like, <laughs> yeah no it's just like... a bunch of people doing it because like they arrested the one guy yeah, they've tradition. arrested many of the people like people just carry it on i mean okay to be fair if you are in this town in sweden if we go to this town see the goat i'm gonna burn it down <laughs> i want to be the guy right, like, i, I want to be the guy like now i feel like i have that's to. what we should do we should, yeah, live we should stream go to it. sweden we should we should live stream the burning of the gavel goat we could put like gasoline on it in a pattern that says like a deep lore boys. It has our logo on right, the side. Right, yeah. So we burn that. People see that first. And then on the other side, it just says subscribe. And we have an anti arsonist rule in our fire company where if you've been convicted of arson in the past, you can't join the company. Oh, so I would be kicked out of shoot. my fire company. So unfortunately, that's a no go for me. Oh, you can't do it. that being said, ramming into it with a car is completely fine so hey there hey, we go wait okay. what if the car is on fire what if we what if we drive <laughs> like a flaming monster fire. truck into <laughs> the gal is that arson like that's is that arson that's that's not technically arson if the car is already on we could just <laughs> right like if anything it's arson against the car yeah like <laughs> we broke the engine we were like oh man no our engine is on fire oh we've we're losing control and then crash into the goat if we get hurt yeah. enough in the process they might just think it was like a freak accident and just be like oh whoops this actually reminds me of something else um matthew and i believed 
I mean, this is a little bit random. When we lived in Maryland, there was a Domino's pizza behind our house. And somehow the people tried the, to um, burn it down every other day. Um, every other no, year. somehow the, um, the burglar alarm at Domino's, you could hear it from our house. <laughs> Dude, same and sometimes it would alarm. accidentally go off. So I somehow it went off twice on new year, like I guess two years back to back or something. And my brother and I learned basically that we thought it was tradition for Domino's pizza to get robbed every new year. Like <laughs> on new like, year's. Just, yeah, we thought that traditionally somebody would go. They'd be like, "Oh, New Year, <laughs> new robbery," and just like go over to Domino's, <laughs> right, rob Domino's, rob it, just steal from it, and the alarm would go off. And so one year, it was kind of like a thing that I used to kind of like look forward to as a kid. Was like one day when I'm an adult, I get to be the one that robs Domino's. <laughs> it robs on new Domino's. Year. It was like I get to be the new guy. Year's. Yeah, that'd be great. Well, I remember thinking like I don't want to work at Domino's because what happens when it gets robbed on New Year? Yeah. Like, it's right, like, and New Year comes around. Maybe, and they like yeah, lock maybe the that's down. like the gavel goat. The gavel goat yeah. in Middletown. That that town has more lore than just the dominoes getting robbed. It has like the snallygaster and crap. But so predictions for this year, the gavel goat will survive. I think is is what we're saying, right? Me and Jackson I agree on will. that. What about you, Matthew? I think it will. I think it will. I think it will. Okay, we got a, a bold claim here. We'll have to like come back around for a Christmas episode. Yeah, we'll come back around and for touch a Christmas on the gavel goat and, and, and see out. if it's still around. Well, when does the goat go back? Like, when do they take it down? Because it's gonna I think be it's the they... first of December. It goes up, but I don't know when it goes down. <laughs> I don't think it has a go down date because it normally ends up getting blasted before then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it just it doesn't. If it, it survives, then it's there. <laughs> right. There's something to be um, said about you got like a bowl of salsa or queso and instead of trying to just finagle it around the chip, you just put your whole hand in there and just get your hand nice and coated in there and then just, like, <laughs> I don't know, I guess eat it off. Wait, so like coat your hand in the salsa and then dip it in the chips and just as you're eating the chips with your salsa covered hand, you, you're inevitably that, see that? That's get the a chips and salsa idea. experience. That's a good idea. I don't it's understand why more people don't do that. I mean, it's not like we don't have sinks. Like, we have soap. Like, we can wash our hands afterwards. So why don't people do more things like that? When you have running water in your house, there is zero excuse why you should not dunk your hand in a bowl of queso <laughs> and then stick it into a bag. <laughs> stick it in your mouth. That's a good idea. So basically, what happened was Alexander the Great reportedly 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 there isn't there's no wikipedia article on this but basically apparently he decided that enough conquering the land let's conquer the sea and so he put oh. himself in a glass barrel and was lowered down into the ocean and yeah it was a disaster in one instance of the case it's said that he had his mistress like carry the chain that was like holding him he was she was on a boat and she was there with like one of his like guy friends or whatever. And then she decided to like cheat on him with the guy. And then she dropped the chain and he was stuck down there, but still managed to like break out of this glass barrel and swim to the surface. Oh, that is most a likely Chad. a tall tale. But I love that. I love that story so much. Alexander, the, I, I imagine like, cause there's a lot of stories about him having this crisis where he was like, no, there's no more land left for me to conquer. What do I do? Oh, yeah. But apparently he saw the, he said when he came back up, the world is damned and lost. <laughs> I'm the reading big that right now. fish yeah. devour the small fry and he couldn't handle <laughs> the fact that the big fish eat the little fish. <laughs> and it's just the idea of this total war hero can't watch a little fish get eaten by a big fish. <laughs> That is true PTSD of like the highest order. All of those, all of the the combat that he's seen, the war that he waged across continents. No, no. The big fish eat the little fish. Man. <laughs> the horror, man. Just the the image of Alexander the Great coming out of the water. They like pull the glass barrel up, and he busts out of that thing. Just, <gasps> it was horrible. The oh, world God. is lost. So. This is all this is all alleged. It's based off of like <laughs> right. books and tales written at the time because apparently he was like an action hero in ancient culture like they literally wrote tons of like fan fiction about him and stuff, which I just love. I love like there are literal books 
from the time of Alexander the Great with like superpowers, like which right, is just right. so cool to me. I feel like our first clue that this story is perhaps based on a true event, but not exactly real, is that he goes down in this glass bubble, which we know would not have contained enough oxygen, most likely, to have him be down there for a while. Like, I'm not getting a lot of info on how long he was down there, but, like, a glass bubble, how? It's not gonna, because bathyspheres work, but they usually put, like, compressed air and stuff in that, and, you know, the bathysphere was first made in, like, the 60s. What if they had, like, stuck him in there and then lowered him down for 10 minutes and then pulled him back up and he's just suffocated? They just, like, like dropped him down. Seven minutes ago. (laughs) (laughs) That would be a (laughs) way to go. Oh, jeez. So bad. Although, I guess maybe he could have, like, broken out of the glass and swam up. But by the time you realize you need to do that. I mean, yeah, according to to the one story, he had to do that because his mistress dropped the chain into the water so he had no choice nobody could lower him or raise him back up so he just had to break out of the <laughs> glass and, <laughs> and go up, up. that's a really just... underrated part of the story poor guy and i feel bad for him because he was like in his 20s when he died so like right he was pretty young he was he was pretty young so that means in this instance he would have just been like a young adult he could have depending on if he decided to do this once he ran out of land to conquer or if he just did this along the way we're not sure why he could have been like a literal teenager if he was going to come up out of the water and have this altered view of the world and of reality i would have expected some like cosmic encounter like he went down there and saw cthulhu (laughs) Cthulhu he comes back up and just Honestly, that sounds like something that Lovecraft would have written, though, that some ancient king oh, lowered yeah. himself beneath the water in a glass bubble and met Cthulhu or a Shoggoth or some other piece of cosmic oh, yeah. terror. So if, can I can I introduce it since I'm... Since no. I, okay. Which one? Oh. <laughs> no. no. Alexandria no. Bucephalus. So a few years ago when I was reading history in high school, I remember reading about a city that Alexander the Great conquered near India. I don't remember exactly what eastern country it was, but it was it was on the um, outskirts of the Roman Empire. Alexander the Great had already named like dozens of cities after himself. So um, what a guy! He decided to name this city after his horse. <laughs> what? So yeah, so um, the name of the city is of course Alexandria Bucephalus. Bucephalus was the name of his horse. The word Bucephalus in the ancient Greek comes from ox and head. So yeah, it just means ox head. So I guess it was, he had a really strong muscular looking ox like head. And I'm seeing that Bucephalus had died after the battle of Hydus, Hydaspes, Hydaspes in 326 BC. So he died in, so. wait, no, okay, not in battle, but after the battle. So does that mean that he went down as like a war hero or did he just go to war and then die of like the common horse cold? I'm assuming he probably like got wounded in battle. Maybe he like got stabbed by a lance as he was going by, but he just kept plowing forward like a champ. There's a lot here on the, the taming of Bucephalus. Yeah, this, this is a big wiki. Alexander was given a chance and surprised everybody by subduing this horse that apparently no one else could tame. He spoke soothingly to the horse and turned it toward the sun so it could no longer see its own shadow, which had been the cause of its distress. Oh, dang. Oh, dude. So the horse was just spooked because this shadow demon horse was following him. Dude, I mean, that's terrifying, man. Alexander came up to him and was like, nah, bro, I shall slay that creature of darkness. So I'm seeing here that Alexander apparently had a lot of love for this horse. I think he was kind of going all fanboy on Bucephalus because... Yeah, he really liked this horse. It says, The value which Alexander placed on Bucephalus emulated his hero and supposed ancestor Achilles, who claimed that his horses were known to excel all others, for they are immortal. Poseidon gave them to my father Peleus, who in turn gave them to me. Whoa. Given to Alexander by the gods. By Percy Jackson's dad. According to legend, um, the horse ate people. Whoa! Dude. Bucephalus was going all... Ca- well, it's not cannibalism if he's eating humans, I guess, because he's a horse. Dude, he was a carnivorous horse. That is one of the most disturbing, terrifying concepts. So, wait, did he, like, just eat the the people that Alexander brought to him? Or did he, I like, like to picture that, like, the horse is in battle. Alexander is, like, charging down... 
into battle and then just Bucephalus just runs in there and just like munches <laughs> somebody's head clean off. <laughs> so, like, picture, like, <laughs> right, like somebody just, like swings no. a sword at him and Bucephalus just like bites his arm in half. Like, and, like, just picture, <laughs> yes. like him totally just running through. Man. Yeah. So Bucephalus literally feasted on the blood of his enemies. That's wild. He did. Bucephalus is is bussin to put it lightly. <laughs> he is to put it simply in, in layman's terms he's bussin i found a little bit on how he died here which it's just part of him bussin i'm not trying to change the subject because he was apparently a fighter um but but the sources are a little uncertain on exactly how he went down it is said by some sources that bucephalus died at the age of 30 which is pretty dang old for a horse, if I'm correct. I'm not sure how long they live on average, but that, that's, that's that very seems old like for a horse, especially at that time. Incredibly right. old. Other sources give the cause of death as not old age or weariness, but fatal injuries in the battle of there it is again, Hydaspes, 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 Hydaspes. But they won. They won that battle. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait a second. So nobody knows exactly where the city is. Oh, man, so this town has been lost to time. I want to see the the next Indiana Jones movie should be, like, Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Bucephalus. If you had multiple Bucephalus, would they be Bucephali? <laughs> that is really surreal. Hi again, it's Jesse. Hope you enjoyed this episode of the Deep Lore Boys podcast. You can find more episodes of our show on YouTube and Spotify, which we encourage you to share with your friends so we can grow the podcast. And drop a comment down below if you're feeling extra generous. Thanks so much for listening, and I hope your day is nothing short of interesting. Take care. I'm going to go post that one on Twitter.com.